Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll show you how to create a scrolling chart in Excel. Let's get into it. Let's start off by showing you the final result. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to create a chart that behaves like this. Pretty cool, huh? Who knows? Maybe you can impress the boss with this one. All right, here's how it's done. To begin, let's take a quick peek at our data. It's very straightforward. Here we have a list with three columns. The first column is a date that shows the month and year followed by the expenses and sales for each month. Now, it's important to note that if you do this in real life, make sure your date column is sorted chronologically because if not, your chart will not cooperate. Next, let's jump over to the scrolling chart sheet and take a moment to explain the setup. Prior to recording, I copied over the column headings from the list, then counted down 12 rows and applied shading to the rows. These shaded rows are going to be the basis of our chart, in a moment, we're going to work some magic and use a function that will pull in and show one year of data from any given time from our list. As a bonus, and for lack of a better term, we're also going to create a funky rolling time frame effect. Now granted, that seems a bit odd, but as you see things come together, it will become more clear. For now, let's keep going. Moving on, up here you'll see where it says index reference. And in cell A5, let's type the number 1. Now, this number one is going to serve as a starting point for the first date in our data set. Or put another way, as we work our magic and build our formula, this number one is going to connect to January of 2019. Again, it sounds awkward. Just keep tracking. It'll all come together. Now it's time for the magic move. Let's use the index function because we can leverage it to pull in the data from our other sheet. It'll be easier if we build the index function first then take a moment to explain what's going on. Let's click down here in cell A9. Then we'll go up and click on the FX icon and we'll fire up the index after we search for it. And with this prompt, just click OK. The first thing Excel wants to know is the array. In this case, the array is going to be our dates from the other sheet. So we'll jump over and select all the dates. Now for the row number, what we'll do is go up here and click on cell A5, which contains the number one. After we click on it, we'll press F4 to lock that cell in place. Next, we can click OK, and if things cooperate, we should see January of 2019 appear. All right, cool. Now, we can drag the formula down, and we should see 12 months worth of data. OK, so let's take a moment to explain what's going on here. When we use the index function, behind the scenes, it assigned numbers to all the dates in the original data. So January of 2019 had an index number of 1, February of 2019 had an index number of 2, and so on. So if we take this for a test drive and manually change the index reference number to let's say 3, we should see March of 2019 at the top of the shaded area since it's in the third row of our data. And if we change the number again to let's say 10, it should show October of 2019 since October is in the 10th row of our data. Let's say we type the number 25. When we do that, we get January of 2021 because that date is in the 25th row of our data. You get the idea. Okay, things are looking good. Let's keep going. Moving right along, the expense and sales columns, it's really just a rinse and repeat. The only change needed is to adjust the index function for the appropriate columns. So, in the interest of time, we'll speed things up and use the index function again for the expenses and sales columns, just making sure we get the appropriate data. So we'll go up here, click on the FX, choose index, the array is going to be our expense numbers. Let's lock in cell A5, drag things down, looks good. And we'll do a rinse and repeat for the sales. And we're all set. The next thing we need to do is create our chart. We can do that by first selecting our data, then choosing insert charts. And let's go with a line graph. We'll forego any fancy formatting because we can do that later. Let's just keep going and stick to the matter at hand. Moving on, the next thing we need to do is add our scroll bar. To do that, we first need to make sure our developer tab is showing. So in case yours isn't visible, click where it says File, Options, Customize Ribbon, and choose Developer tab. Now, from the Developer tab, click Insert, look under Form Controls, 
and choose the scroll bar, which is this icon right here. After you select it, just do a click and drag, placing it under your chart. Something like this is just fine. Now that we created our scroll bar, the next step is to integrate the interactivity between our chart and the scroll bar itself. To do that, let's right click on the control and choose format control. For the current value, let's set that to one. We'll make the minimum value one as well. For the maximum value, you can play around with that. It really depends on how much your data set might grow. For now, we'll just leave it as is. The incremental change, let's leave that as one. The page change, let's leave that as 10, and we'll come back and explain a few of these options in a moment. The most important part is the cell link. After we click there, let's go up and click on cell A5, which contains the number one. That is going to connect our control to the content of cell A5, which in turn is connected to our data in the shaded area. Let's click OK. Now, if we start to click on the scroll arrow, you'll notice the chart is obviously changing, but let's focus up here on cell A5 with this index reference number. Notice it increases by one when we click on the arrow on the control. This is happening because the cell is connected to the control. As the control changes, so will the value of the cell. So whatever value is in cell A5, you'll see it reflected in the shaded area because the index formula points to cell A5. And that's how it's done. Let's take a moment and type a few loose ends. A few moments ago, when we were formatting the control, there were two options. One was called incremental change. The other was page change. Let's clarify what they mean. So we'll do a right click on the control itself and choose format control. The incremental change controls how much the cell value in A5 will change when you click on an arrow. So if we type in five, each time we click on the arrow, you'll notice the cell value jumps by five. The page change will control how much the chart will shift when you click on the scroll bar itself, not the individual arrows. So by default, every time you click in an area on the scroll bar itself, you'll notice the index reference number jumps by 10. Moving on, if we add some new data to our data source, the chart will be nice and include the new data. That's pretty cool. Yet a word of caution. If you ever scroll past the end of your data, Excel will get very angry and the chart you see will not be so pleasant. So just be careful of that. Moving on up here where it reads index reference. This might cause some confusion for people. So I'm a big fan of creating illusions. So to make it easier on the eyes, we can take that font and make it white and that makes things a little more tidy. And last, perhaps we can apply some formatting to the sheet itself or take some time and make the chart a little more visually appealing. We'll leave that part up to you. And that will pretty much do it for this one. With any luck, you've been able to learn some new things. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and we'll see you in the next one.